Going it alone. This is the core idea of an Iron Man, and thus we don't have access to the bustling economy of the Grand Exchange. So how do you make money as an Iron Man? Well this series is going to explore that question by testing different methods and determining what's worth your time and what isn't. Since this is the first installment in the series, what better place to start than with the OSRS wiki guide on making money for Iron Man. There are a ton of methods on this list, so I'm going to try and keep it brief and just give a general overview of the method and my experience while testing it. So let's jump into it with our first money maker, Bronze Chain Bodies, which has no requirements. The idea is pretty simple, pick up the chain bodies from this spawn here, and then sell them to the general store nearby. And at first, I thought this method would be really bad. And that's because it is. I was getting a whopping 3.9k GP an hour. I wouldn't recommend doing this, honestly I think you can do almost anything else in the game and get better rates. Moving on to our second money maker, we have Collecting Iron Swords. You will need 20% Shazy in favor. This method isn't much different from the previous, we're just picking up some swords from this spawn and selling them to the shop nearby. I was getting 18.3k GP an hour, so not great but at least better than the previous one. Overall I still wouldn't really recommend this for long periods of time, but if you need a quick 20k and have literally no stats, I can see you doing this once early on in an account. Up next we have one I'm sure a lot of people have heard of before, picking up steel plate bodies in the wilderness, which has no requirements, but I do recommend bringing some food with you if you're a lower level. As this is another spawning method, basically the same as the previous two, all you need to do is head to the lava maze, pick up a full inventory of steel plate bodies, then head back to the Ferrex Enclave and bank them in repeat. And since the requirements don't really say anything, I'm just going to assume at this stage I can't teleport or use high elk, so I'm simply just going to run and bank everything. I ended up getting 101k GP an hour. Honestly, I had really negative expectations of this method, simply because it's in the wilderness, but I would say if you need some quick cash and don't have any stats to work with, this is at least far better than the previous two item spawn methods. I might have just gotten lucky, but I didn't really ever see any PKers, however there were a ton of worlds with no plate bodies, so I don't really think you could stay here for long periods of time. Our next method we're finally moving away from these item spawn strats and we'll be buying uncut sapphires and emeralds, cutting them and selling them back. You will need 27 crafting for this. The process is pretty simple, trade this guy here, buy his sapphire and emerald, cut them, sell them back and then world hop and repeat. I found the quickest execution was to buy the gems available, then immediately world hop using a keyboard shortcut, then cut the gems and sell it to him and repeat the process. I was getting 48.4k GP an hour as well as 16k crafting exp an hour. I really wouldn't recommend this method even though the numbers seem good on the surface, simply because the restock time for each gem is between 4 and 6 hours, so if you have any competition at all, the entire thing falls apart. Not to mention, even without competition, you can only do one full run through all of the worlds before you're just going to have to wait a while anyways. Next up, we have an oldie but a goodie, fletching longbows. We'll be fletching willows which will require 35 fletching, 30 woodcutting, and 10 crafting. This one's pretty self-explanatory. You cut logs, in this case willows, fletch them into long bows, pick flax, craft bowstrings, string the bows, and then sell them to a shop. The biggest variable here is going to be your woodcutting level, as that's really going to dictate how much GP an hour you can make, and given that I have 82 woodcutting, cutting willows is going to lead to some pretty skewed results. So I'll share my rates, but I'm going to also show you how you can gauge your rates a little more accurately. I ended up getting 41.4k GP an hour. Now we can normalize this a bit by removing the time it takes to cut the logs, and we can get roughly 63.4k GP an hour, which is maybe a more useful value since usually you're just going to cut a bunch of logs in bulk anyways before fletching them. And for the EXP I ended up getting 50.2k woodcutting EXP an hour, 83.9k fletching EXP an hour, and 20.5k crafting EXP. 
I would definitely recommend doing this as a moneymaker, especially in the early game, as it only improves as you unlock higher level trees. Not to mention you can really speed this up if you start doing temple trekking for your bowstrings instead of crafting them. Up next we have ham storerooms. You will need at least 20 thieving, 55 mage, and completed at least half of the death to the Dorgishin quest. For this method, we'll be thieving from the ham guards for the keys that unlock these four chests. With four corresponding keys, drop anything else that isn't a key and pickpocket them till you have roughly four open inventory slots remaining. They patrol around the room, but if you pickpocket one of them and fail, for some reason they will stop moving around. So you can kind of trivialize this by making ones in the corners not move and then they will never stop you from opening the doors. Or you can hop worlds until you find a world that's already kind of set up this way. You will get a random amount of jewelry, which seems to be between 1 and 4, or some GP. You will then alk these items. I like to alk one at a time between each chest opening or while I'm running to the next door. Optionally, you can also bring Lumbridge teleport runes to bank the items instead of alking them, but this will be much slower. I ended up with 114k GP an hour. However, I do have 99 thieving, so obviously these numbers are going to be quite skewed. So let's take the base success rate on these cards, which I found to be around 60%, and apply it to our GP. Then we're left with 68.4k GP an hour. This is a rough approximation, but you should be able to get rates somewhere in this range. Also, this GP was calculated without the rogue's outfit on, so if you do have that, you can get double the GP an hour here. For EXP, I was getting about 23.3k thieving EXP an hour, and 22.6k mage EXP an hour. So yeah, I would recommend this moneymaker. It's pretty easy and really good GP an hour for such low requirements. The next moneymaker is Thieving Silk from Silk Stalls in Artie. You will need 20 thieving. All we're doing is thieving from this silk stall and then banking the silk. The only thing you really need to watch out for are the guards do sometimes patrol over here, but it's pretty easy to tell when they're going to see you, and you don't need to worry about the hero because apparently he's just way too important to care about petty theft. Huh? Once you've finished thieving your silk, we will be selling it back to the silk trader here. However, he won't buy your silk until you wait 20 minutes for his short term memory loss to kick in. Once you've done this, bring an inventory of silk, he won't buy noted, and talk to him, first offer to sell it for 120 GP. He will then counter offer and you will counter his counter offer for 60 GP, which is the max he will buy them for. I only ended up getting 28k GP an hour as well as 11.3k thieving XP an hour. Honestly, even though I know people have been doing this method for a really long time, I just don't really see a ton of value in it, so I don't recommend it. It's pretty low rates across the board, and it's just kind of annoying to sell them one inventory at a time and having to navigate the dialogue. Next up we have one of my personal favorites, the Agility Pyramid, which does require 30 agility, but 70 plus is highly recommended. This is another pretty straightforward method. Climb to the top of the agility pyramid by jumping over the obstacles. Then grab the pyramid top once you've reached the summit. Return through this exit door and sell the top to this guy here for 10k each. All you really need to bring are water skins and some food and graceful if you have it, which if you did follow the recommendation of 70 plus, you probably do. But for testing, I won't be using it. The only thing to watch out for are the moving blocks. No matter what your agility level is, if you're hit by one, you will be knocked down to the previous level. My one bit of advice is only carry a few pyramid tops at a time as they weigh 11 kilos each, so you're gonna burn through your run energy. The fail rate at the early levels is pretty brutal, so I would really advise waiting till you're around level 70 to come here, and at 75, you stop failing entirely. I was getting a whopping 220k GP an hour as well as 38.2k agility XP an hour. I do have high enough agility so that I don't fail, but I didn't use any energy restoring potions as well as no graceful, so these values can definitely go higher. Yes, I 100% recommend doing the agility pyramid, it was my go to money maker early on as an Iron Man, and I know 70 agility can seem like a pretty steep requirement, but truthfully it's not too bad to get and it's really good to have anyways. For our next money maker, we have Giant's Foundry. You will need 30 smithing and completion of the Sleeping Giant's quest. This is the first method that isn't as straightforward and honestly, I really didn't expect much of it. But the basic idea here is we're going to head to these two shops in Al Karid, and we're going to buy out all of their stock in both iron and steel plate legs and skirts. 
Once we have a decent amount bought and banked, we'll head to Giant's Foundry. If you are unaware, you can use pre-made items in place of bars in this minigame, and each plate leg slash skirt that we bought will act as two bars each. I'll be using a 50-50 split of iron and steel, so seven items each, but you can definitely play with this ratio. Then we get our contract and make a sword playing the minigame like normal until we run out of armor to deposit. The kicker is we get GP for completing these swords. I ended up getting 54k GP an hour and 89k smithing XP an hour. I was very pleasantly surprised with this method so I definitely recommend trying it as there is almost no other way for Iron Man to both make money and get good smithing XP an hour at the same time. There are just two kind of glaring flaws with this method. One is you need a decent amount of starting money to get a good supply, I would say around 100k is good enough. And second, like any other method using shops, competition with other players will ultimately kill it, so it might be worth exploring other shops that sell armor as well. For our next method we have blackjacking menafight thugs. You'll need 65 thieving, completion of the feud quest, and the full rogues outfit. So there's a bit of a setup process, but once you have things set up it's not too bad. First off, make sure you have a full inventory of wines minus one spot for coins and one for noted wines. Then make sure to turn your attack options to hidden and use the menu entry swapper plugin to set the pickpocket to left click and disable auto attack. Optionally, you can also download the blackjacking plugin which makes this a little easier as they'll be green when they're safe to pickpocket and orange when they're not. Then once in Polnavich, head to this house and lure a menafite thug by himself and close the curtain. If he isn't facing you, talk to him to get him to turn around or else when you knock him out he's going to fall in the wrong direction. Now that he's isolated, right click him to knock him out and position your camera and mouse so that you don't need to move it when selecting the knockout option. Now just repeat this cycle of knocking him out and pickpocketing him twice while he's unconscious. If he hits you and you fail the knockout, try to immediately knock him out again. If this doesn't work and he keeps attacking you, right click him to lure and leave your mouse hovering over the lure option and click it the moment you see your character's damage plan animation. Then spam through the dialogue as fast as you can to interrupt his attack and make him lose aggro. The only other thing to keep in mind is that we always want a full inventory, which is why we're using wines, because when you drink a wine, the jug will still remain in your inventory. This will prevent us from getting coin pouches and thus prevent us from accidentally pickpocketing him while standing up. For the rates, I'm going to be using my groupmate Ziggurus' stats since his stats are 77 and are much closer to the requirements. He ended up with 183k GP an hour as well as 210k thieving XP an hour. So I personally don't love this method as it's not really that AFKable, but it gives you some of the best EXP an hour as well as GP an hour for thieving, so I have to recommend giving it a try and seeing if it's for you. The next one's going to be a little different, and that's High Elking Rune Arrows from Last Man Standing. The only requirement is 55 mage. So I'm going to keep it 100 here. There is no way I'm going to be able to do anything meaningful at LMS as I have zero PvP experience. So I'm going to take the guides 3 to 4 points an hour and just calculate what you should be able to get. But the idea is pretty simple. You play on less, you get some points, you buy rune arrows, and then you alk them. By my calculations, on average if you're getting 3 to 4 points an hour, you should be able to get around 117k GP an hour. It's really hard to give a good verdict on this one, but hey, if you're decent at PvPing, this seems like it could be a pretty decent and fun way to make some money. Up next is another one I personally used a lot, which is Thieving Arty Knights. You will need 55 thieving, but 95 plus is recommended, completion of the Arty Medium Diary, and full rogues outfit. This is a pretty easy one. Go to the bank in Arty and hop worlds to find someone splashing on an Arty Knight, or use the CC like Splash Worlds to find one. These three spots are some of the most common. Once you find a world, angle your screen like this so that if he walks back and forth, you will still keep thieving. Set your attack options to hidden and your menu entry swapper plugin to be left click pickpocket, then spam click away. The only thing to remember is that if he's in this spot and gets unstuck, you need to stop pickpocketing him so the splasher can fix it. So I was able to get 288k GP an hour, and for comparison I'm going to use my groupmate Zig's rates as well. He was able to get 140k GP an hour with 77 thieving. And our relative XP rates were 242k at 99 thieving and 115k XP an hour at 77 thieving. 
Yes, I definitely recommend this, but I will say you kind of have to know what you're looking for. I really love this place because it was super AFK compared to something like blackjacking. But if you just want to be as optimal as possible, wait to come here until around level 85. That's when Arty Knights makes more GP an hour than blackjacking. The next method we will cover is crafting fire battle staves. You will need 70 agility, 80s recommended, and 63 mage as well as 62 crafting and full graceful. So before I get into this method, I just want to give a quick disclaimer that I'm making the assumption you already have some unpowered orbs, because I think most Iron Men do have a decent amount of these at this point just from doing general crafting training, and if I didn't, this would be like a 20 step method. You will first buy your staves in Varrock, preferably with the daily discount, but I'm not going to be counting on that as you can still hop and buy 5 per world. Then head to Falador while bringing Falador teleport runes as well as cosmic runes. Make sure you're wearing your graceful, a fire staff, a ring of dueling if you don't have an ornate rejuvenation pool, and lastly, an anti-dragon shield. Then run over to Taverly Dungeon and use this shortcut to run to the fire obelisk to begin charging your orbs. If you get poisoned on the way, you will need to recast the spell every time it damages you. Then once you're finished, either teleport to the Ferex Enclave to heal your poison, or if you aren't poisoned, teleport directly back to Falador and start a new run. Once all your orbs are powered, attach them to your battle staves and then alk them. I was getting 402k GP an hour, which does include all input costs, including cosmic, natures, and the cost of the staves themselves. For the EXP, I was getting 34.7k magic XP an hour, as well as 30.4k crafting XP an hour. Honestly, I found myself enjoying this a lot more than I expected to. I definitely recommend doing this with all your battle staves, as it's really not that difficult and makes a pretty solid amount of GP. Our next money maker is Zaya Blood Rune Crafting. You'll need 77 rune crafting as well as 73 agility. This is one of the more AFK ones on this list and I really enjoy it. All you need to bring is the raiments of the eye outfit if you have it and graceful if not, but I'll give both rates at the end, as well as a pickaxe and a chisel. Then come mine some dense essence blocks at the dense runestone mine. Mine a full inventory and head over to the dark altar to venerate them into dark essence blocks. On your way back to the mine, chisel them all and mine a second full inventory then head back to the altar and venerate this second batch. Head up to the blood altar and craft your dark essence fragments into blood runes and chisel your second batch of dark essence and then repeat. Then head back down the shortcut and start the process again. Once you're ready to sell your runes, you'll need to head to Ali Morsain and Alcarid, as he will always buy your blood runes at a fixed price of 200 GP each. I was able to get 302k GP an hour without raiments, which roughly translates to about 483k GP an hour with raiments, as well as 37k rune crafting XP an hour, 4.3k mining XP an hour, and 5.9k crafting XP an hour. So I'm going to say yes, but with an asterisk attached. Blood runes are super valuable to Iron Man, and you will need lots of them later on, so if you want to use this as a money maker, I really recommend at the very least stocking up on a decent amount of these for personal use first before selling any. Also, the 60% increase in rune yield from the Raymond's outfit is massive, so I highly advise getting this first. Up next, we have our last skilling moneymaker, Alking Amethyst Javelin Heads. You'll need 92 mining and 87 crafting. Another really AFK moneymaker, but also one with the steepest requirements. This is about as straightforward as it gets. All you need is a pickaxe and a chisel, and if you have it, Varrock Armor 4 for the 10% chance of double amethyst. Mine the Amethyst Gem, chisel it into Javelin Heads, then Alk the Heads. I recommend chiseling them and alking them as soon as you get them so you don't have to do a tedious amount of alking all at once. Since you do get 5 heads per gem, it can rack up pretty quickly. I was getting 198k GP an hour. And for the XP an hour, I was getting 7.5k Magic, 13.1k Mining, and 3.2k Crafting. These rates might seem a little underwhelming considering how high the requirements are, but there really isn't anything more AFK on this list and it's been my go-to AFK method while editing this video. You can also obviously improve these rates with a Dragon Pickaxe, Varric Armor 4, and Superior Mining Gloves. For our first and only boss on this list, we have Vorkath. The only requirements are High Combat and Completion of the Dragon Slayer 2 quest. So I'm not going to be going too in depth here as this isn't a Vorkath guide, but we will be doing a melee method and my trusty proxy Zig will be helping demonstrate these last two methods as his stats are just better for them. 
The only thing he's doing differently from a normal Vorkrath fight is showing off his sweet dance moves. He's flinching to avoid the melee hits and Wooks walking during the acid phase to still deal some damage. We ended up getting 493k GP an hour, which only includes the alkables. But we actually only ended up getting some good alkables in the last few kills, so this method might be a little volatile. Even though we ended up with a pretty good rate, I think the requirements to make this viable are just a little too high to really recommend. I think most people will only be able to get around maybe 1-2 to two kill trips, and I think since this guide has come out, there are just better bosses to farm for Iron Man, which I will cover in a future video. That being said, if you do have good enough gear, Vorkath can actually be pretty fun. Lastly, we have Rune Dragons. Which you'll need high combat and completion of the Dragon Slayer 2 quest. I'll tell you right up front, if you don't have super high combat and good melee gear, I just wouldn't even attempt this one. The guide recommends using a Dragon Hunter Lance, but we don't have access to one of those yet, so we'll be using a Fang instead, which is a pretty close second. And for gear, we're pretty much just bringing the best balance of tank gear and offensive gear that we have available. The process itself is pretty simple though. Load up your inventory like this, be on the Arceus Spellbook for Thralls and Sinister Offering. Then just head to Lithgren and start slaying dragons. The only thing we need to do is summon one Thrall per kill and use Sinister Offering every time we have three bones to sacrifice. This will help us manage our inventory while still getting some decent XP out of the bones. The average trip with the setup was about 8 kills. We were able to get 440k GP an hour or roughly 11k GP per kill. For some larger context, Zig has done 2000 plus kills here and this was his overall loot, netting him roughly 26 mil in alkables. So even though these numbers sound really great, I just can't justify recommending this for an Iron Man, as by time you have the stats and gear to do this, your time really is just better spent elsewhere. But it can net you a lot of goodies if you do decide to pursue it. So the astute among you might have noticed that I skipped a few along the way, so let's talk about those now. These methods were just kind of weird to quantify and overall were good advice, but hard to call them money makers on their own or I just wasn't able to do them. The first one is selling cats for death runes. You can sell cats for 200 death runes each, which can earn you about 13.3k GP an hour, but keeping the runes is far more beneficial as the death runes just have more value as runes, which in turn saves you 40k GP an hour. This method is useful in the early game, but becomes really unnecessary once you just have faster access to death runes such as through barrows. Guardians of the Rift is a really beneficial minigame for Ironman, as runecrafting can be very difficult to train in the early game. However, the amount of money that can be made here varies so widely depending on several factors, such as level, quest completed, items unlocked, etc., making it really difficult to quantify. And ultimately, it's just not worth it as a moneymaker for early level Ironmen because the runes you can make just aren't worth anything. And then on the flip side, once you have access to higher level runes, they just have more value as runes than GP, so it's just not recommended to sell them. So while Guardians of the Rift is a super great runecrafting method, Unless you have a huge surplus of runes, I highly recommend you just keep them. Next up is Slayer. I think this one's kind of obvious. Yes, Slayer is good and over time will 100% make you lots of money, but it's impossible to give you an accurate GP an hour. So instead, I'm just going to give you a quick list of some profitable tasks. Now lastly is Blast Mining. Unfortunately, out of the 22 different money makers on this list, this was the only one that I just didn't have the requirements and I did not have time to go out of my way to get 89 smithing for. So I'm going to leave this one on the table for now, but I will cover it properly in a future Iron Money video. Well that covers everything on the wiki guide. There was definitely a lot of nice surprises on this list that I don't think I would have ever even tried otherwise. I had a lot of fun with this video and I want to make more in the future, so if you have any ideas for methods you would like me to feature in a future video, let me know down in the comments or post them here in my discord channel. Also, I just want to say thank you guys so much for 1k subs. It's honestly been crazy and really heartwarming reading all your comments and just watching this channel grow. Alright, have a good one guys. I'll catch you in the next one.